Sometimes people who have grown up in a religious tradition come to a point where they wonder, is this stuff really true? Now, a lot of people don't worry about it. They just figure it is what it is, and maybe I participate, maybe I don't. I just do what I choose to do. But other people press on that a bit. They, they want to push further to try to understand what's true about the belief system. And as they do, they may become confused, they may become frustrated, they may become angry. They may feel like they were sold a bill of goods, that somebody's been lying to them. All of these things are natural when we begin to question belief systems. But I think those questions are of critical importance for us to really move forward and grow and to develop the spiritual dimension of our life more fully. It's by questioning that we come to resolve and understand some, some pieces of our own life. So today I want to talk about pushing against the belief systems we've been taught and why that's important for us. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel, as well as to click the bell to be notified of future videos. In a very strange way, I think I was lucky. I was raised in, in a Catholic environment. I went to Catholic grade school and high school. But when I went through the system, or at least because of the teachers I had, I eventually was taught to question. Now, not whenever I was really little, but whenever I was, you know, reaching high school. And I was told that, you know, things of science and math, that's, those are facts. Those, those are things to their, they are what they are. But religion, well, you know, there's some interpretation here that maybe Adam and Eve really didn't exist, and maybe Noah didn't build an ark, and and maybe there are other pieces of this and that are just a story to convey something. And I learned more of that sense whenever I got to college and began to take uh, courses, uh, academic courses on the Bible and began to realize that there are lots of different ways to read any part of the Bible, that there are different tools to use, and, and one of the important tools is, is really called, is called demythologizing. It's, it's looking past the most obvious statements to dig in deeper, to see the truth that's underneath. And that truth may not be about the facts of the story, but may be about something that the writers of the Bible are trying to convey about their experience. And that was tremendously helpful for me. There's another way in which people ask questions. Another technique that's used, that's an academic technique, it's called deconstruction. And deconstruction is used in a lot of different disciplines in history and in, in anthropology, as well as, you know, when dealing with beliefs. And, and in particularly with religion, you can look at belief systems and rituals and, and other things that people hold on to. And what deconstruction is doing is trying to take things apart to look and understand what's underneath, to see what the constituent parts are. And, and what happens, particularly in religion, is you start beginning to see different contradictions or things that don't fit together or assumptions that underlie these pieces that we have today in religious practice that we just don't agree with anymore. And, and part of that has to do with religion evolving over thousands of years. So different things get added in and it doesn't all fit together. And, but others of it are, are just faulty assumptions underneath about the way the world is and the way people are. And so when people engage in this process of deconstruction, they often wonder, is there anything real here? Is it all made up? And again, there, there can be a lot of emotions with that. Uh, and I think in that process, while it can be academically or intellectually enlightening, it can lead people to a lot of frustration. Now, I think that there are some outcomes that are really important to talk about. I think it's important for people to demythologize and deconstruct, because it's only when we do that, only when we ask questions, that we grow and get more insight and move further 
for me, in my case, and there are other people like me, the process of raising these questions led me to look beyond the apparent things that I was taught, to see something deeper, to find that there was a truth that's a metaphoric truth about life, and that there are pieces in the Christian tradition that I want to hold on to. There are pieces in the Christ Christian tradition that I don't want to hold on to. So for me, you know, spiritual practices, the writings of various spiritual teachers and mystics, those are things that are very important to me, celebrating different holidays and what those represent. Things that don't mean so much to me, you know, attendance of Sunday services and maintaining a, an organized religion, uh, you know, the dogma, that, that doesn't mean a lot to me. But there's something about that's deeper, that's part of my spiritual life. People make these kinds of decisions differently. You know, I have a friend, a colleague, who has made some different decisions. For her, Attending service is very important. She doesn't accept the dogma. She doesn't accept a lot of things. But going to church, singing, being able to sing with other people, having a choir that, that produces good music, hearing the organ play, that all is very important to her. And she says that it takes her to a different place. It's an important part of her spiritual life. But whenever I asked her about it more, she said, you know, I'm really glad that I learned Buddhist meditation because I never want to listen to another sermon. As soon as they stand up and speak, I know that I'm going to get angry because I'm going to disagree. So I do meditation and just go somewhere else until they're done. And then I enjoy the music. So she's very selective in terms of what she does for her own health and development. So that's one way in, of, of organizing this. Another way is people step further away. They go through this process of demythologizing and deconstructing and, and realize that it's really better for them to move into that camp where people call themselves spiritual but not religious. They don't want to be associated with where they came from, but they want to focus on their own spiritual development. And, and, and they found something positive about spiritual development, and, and that's very healthy. Of course... There are folks who never want to question anything, and they become very rigid in their beliefs and, and become very threatened when people ask questions. One of the things to bear in mind is that there's research that shows that people who maintain very rigid belief systems, that there's a high correlation between maintaining those belief systems in a rigid way and coronary vascular disease, as well as mental health issues like depression and anxiety. I'm not saying that one thing is causing another, but there's a correlation among these things. So that there are some indicators that those very uh, rigorous beliefs that people cling to and are very judgmental about, it's really not healthy for them. But where health and vitality is found is by questioning, moving further, growing, integrating our beliefs in ways that are helpful for us, and finding new life. Perhaps as we start this new year, it's a great time to consider some things that you need to reanalyze in your religious and spiritual life. Are things working for you the way they should be? Are there ways that you can integrate them further? By questioning and looking at them more deeply, it may take you a step further in your own spiritual growth and development. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, click the, the bell for notifications, leave me some comments, share the video. You know all this YouTube stuff. But most of all, know that your spiritual growth and development is important. Reach out if you're interested in spiritual direction and be sure to have a very good day.